beautiful Chanty played host to the seventh leg of the Langine Global Champions Tour. Known as the capital of the horse, this elegant French town is one of 15 prestigious locations in the 2016 competition. For the seventh year running, the world's top riders made their way to Chanty, renowned for its impressive chateau and premier racetrack. competition was played out on the sweeping grass arena against the exquisite backdrop of the Chateau de Chanty and the beautiful grand stables surrounded by parking. Thousands of fans and VIPs, including Jessica Springsteen, flocked to the unique venue, boasting numerous stylish shops and fantastic facilities. Amateur riders and jumping enthusiasts alike took the chance to rub shoulders with the very best of the show jumping. Well, being here in France, especially in Chanty, it's, uh, it's really nice, the show is uh, amazing, the, the chateau is something unique to jump in front of it and uh, it's a really nice place to be. Chanty is a lovely place, I love being here. Some years ago I was second in the Grand Prix, just like very close <laughs> to get a victory. So it's a special place for me in many ways. One of the classes everyone was talking about was the Grand Prix. It was a massive 300,000 euros up for grabs, but with the biggest names competing, it was anyone's game. Leg six of the competition in Madrid had spectators on the edge of their seats as Germany's Marcus Enning stole a sensational win. In the overall rankings though, it was Christian Almond who clung onto the top spot with John Whitaker in second. Victory in the beautiful town of Chanty was all to play for. One man hoping to maintain his title was last year's Chanty Grand Prix winner, Gregory Watelet. As a highly respected Belgian rider, he's competed all over the globe at Olympic Games and World Championships. But as many of the notable riders may have grown up with a burning desire to be the world's very best, Gregory's journey to the top was quite different. I, I started at the farm of my parents. Uh, my dad had a pony and then it's where everything started. Uh, my parents had nothing to do with horses, it was a farm with cows. Um, I just uh, did it like a hobby in the beginning and then and it's really when I was uh, after my uh, high school, when I was 19, that I really decided to try to do it like, a, like my job, full time. Growing up as the only family member to have such a keen interest in horse riding, Gregory's parents had different ideas about what might be best for their son. My mom wanted that I go to school, <laughs> my dad wanted that I work. Um, no, at the end they were just uh, really good with me, they just pushed me for anything I wanted to do. Even myself, anyway, I didn't want to, to do uh, my job uh, with horses because I knew it was really complicated, uh, really expensive. Uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a hard world to be when you don't come from that uh, world. Um, then it's why I took, it took so long before I did, really decided to try it. And uh, first I even tried the uh, university, and then after it was yeah, too complicated to do both university and riding. And then it's why I chose to do one year's uh, riding, and then it's why I never really stopped. Unlike many other high profile riders, Gregory never had professional coaches and trainers guiding and helping him along the way. It was more about what he did off his own back. Of course, because uh, uh, I was a lot by myself, then I had to watch a lot. I had to try to do like they did, like the best rider did. At uh, national show, regional show, I mean the best rider from our area. I was trying to, to follow them or to watch them and to see what they do and try to do the same. So from his humble beginnings, Gregory has made his way to the very top of the sport competing in high-profile events, including the prestigious Global Champions Tour, which enables him to compete all over the world. I have been uh, almost all of them. I think just uh, Hamburg, I was not there. Um, yeah, for sure, being up there, we traveled a lot. But at the end, it's all really, really good shows. Um, really good organization, for sure. Everything is good for the horses. That's the most important for me. Gregory Watelet was just one of the 50 international riders who took centre stage, battling it out in this year's Chanty Global Champions Tour Grand Prix. 
Riders took to the course, working out their strides and looking for ways to save valuable seconds. 300,000 euros were up for grabs. And with a packed out grandstand, the stage was set. So uh, the Frenchman to start us off on this 10-year-old uh, by uh, Dollar de la Pierre. It's a prime chance to take us around, Stephen Cedric. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Let's have a look around in detail with Cedric on go now. Seven strides from the one to two here. It's a fairly unremarkable first couple of fences, just two big straight fences, and then a right angle across here to quite a wide oxer going into a double. Two strides, and then seven strides up the arena, up to quite a wide oxer. Then the first of the related distances comes next. A wide oxer over a water tray, no big deal. And then five strides to a tall vertical. Fairly short, I mean, it's a holding five down there. And then a couple of eight stride distances here. They could go on the forward one, they could, you could always adjust sevens and eights if you want to do. Unremarkable track, really. And, um, you know, not too many problems. The last fence there, we come at you a little bit quick. Seconds. He's around about three seconds inside now. Well, Colombia's Daniel Blumen now. Daniel with the combination here. Con concreto a party. The riders will be watching this closely because yeah. of the of the time. I don't think the time is too bad. As I said, 73 seconds of the first man was three and a half seconds. That's not a lot inside the time, but he was going at a comfortable pace. Daniel Blumen here. He's going just a, that same down a cog as well, even a little bit slower actually, so he'll have to just keep an eye on the time. The weather, as you say, Steve, is looking very ominous indeed. A couple of flashes of lightning. It's forecast to be about 3 o'clock this afternoon. It's now just after half past. And uh, a mighty clap of thunder a minute or two ago. This ground is OK. They'd had a lot of rain here last week and it's dried up out through the, through the couple of days. It was a little bit juicy, a bit dead on the first day. But it's OK today, but it won't take much to get back into the ground again. But I think you want a really careful horse this afternoon. But this is by no means a difficult course. I think Luke Musett has um, set them a, a, a very jumpable track. And there's our first clear. <laughs> This lady very much on the rise for the French. As we see her progress over the next few seasons. Oh dear. She's not the one she wanted. And uh, well, she's up and walking away. There we go, as we can see. Wasn't to be for Belgium's Jerome Guerry and his gelding Grand Cru van der Rosenberg. No mistaking this silhouette. Le Gebirbaum. And the 13 year old Chiara winning combination in Al Shakab earlier on this season in the Grand Prix there. Le Gebirbaum winning in Hamburg. step of the way brilliantly as he does so well, well that's another one. yeah the time just inside three seconds faces <laughs> two and ten of them in all so look at the number suspects starting to make their way to the top germany's daniel deusser followed suit with another clear round on his 11 year old chestnut first class van ethelhead there you go. Yeah. Two seconds. Second and three quarters inside the time. Christian Alman wouldn't count against him. Currently leader in the series. Twelfth spot was his lowest position. That was last week, and yeah. that's certainly no disgrace. So far in all of the Grand Prix, he's competed through each leg so far. Now with the 13-year-old Colour it. Wearing the leader's armband as he has right the way through. Well over. Oh, that's the first one to have that. Yeah. I was going to say he's well over six feet tall. 190 or 195, whatever that is. Maybe six foot two anyway. 
but a surprising two fences down for overall ranking leader Christian Elman knocked him out of the second round. Last year's Chanty Grand Prix winner Gregory Waterloo of Belgium also missed out on a place in round two on his 11-year-old algorithm. As the rain set in, the brollies went up, but still the crowds showed their support in the packed grandstand. Julien Epia, good start to the day for him. Won a very good class earlier on, and it was a flyer of a class then. Now with the Hello Holdings, uh, Catherine de, de la Roque LM, 12-year-old by Quickstar, out of a cannon mare. Actually, so although we're always saying well-bred, this one certainly got yeah. a good bit of purple in the veins. I'd be a big fan of Quickstar and of Canon. Yeah. That was a lightning fast speed class earlier yeah. on, wasn't it? Well, the top end was. He went off like a motorbike in top gear. It was absolutely brilliant. And Gregory was on it just behind him. Sonora just sitting in uh, 18th position at the moment on the four still. 67 seconds. As the numbers come down. I'm glad I said 12 to 14 now. All right. Well, you've got to have bragging rights when you do occasionally get it right. Yeah. Coming to be potentially a part of this once again. Top three at the end of the first round showed a true international field of the world's top riders. Home rider Julien Epeyal He was closely followed by Luciana Denise and Peter Devos of Belgium finishing in third. 18 of the world's top riders secured their place progressed with a clear round in the first. Daniel Deusser was one of the top class riders battling it out to be crowned number one in the distinguished Chantilly Grand Prix. But these riders don't fly solo when it comes to preparations for events as big as the GCT. Sean Lynch has been Daniel's groom for the past two years. And for them, the key to their successful partnership is very much about a mutual trust. Daniel's super easy. It's you go travel across the world and you'll send him a message when you get there saying I've arrived and he knows everything's okay and he doesn't hassle you like doesn't have to hassle you all the time to see if everything's okay and it's, it's easy everything's always easy. We travel around the world every weekend and um, the three days I'm at home or maybe four days I'm at home he's probably already on the way to the next show um, so you need to work with somebody who can you can trust fully 100% it's a big value on top of his truck, to be honest. They're really expensive and good horses. He drives uh, most of the time a brand new truck, and it's a lot of responsibility to drive around with a truck like that with the horses. If it is someone you couldn't trust or you're not sure about, I think you couldn't have a good feeling sending somebody away like that. Competing all around the world on a regular basis, it's not just a nine to five job, it's a lifestyle and it seems there's always something that needs doing. I'm at home, I'm unpacking, repacking, doing washing and going again. But when I'm on the show, it's you start normal time, 7, 7.30, depending on if you start, you finish late the night before. And yeah, depending on when your classes are in the day, you always make sure the horses have been out in the morning before Daniel come and ride and prepare the horses for the ring and finish up in the evening, do your feeding and making sure the horses are all okay and you have to come back quite late at night. Keeping a cool head is also a priority when the pressure's on and a bit of humour can go a long way. It can actually be quite funny sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> no, like I say, he's super laid back, never 
I don't think I've ever seen him get mad before. And yeah, he can be funny. I would describe him a little bit crazy, to be honest, which I think is important to do that job also. <laughs> um, I've had other grooms who are very quiet, but one point, because it's a, at the end it's a 24-hour job, it's really a, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of responsibility, and if you're not really into it and you don't lift that job, I think it's really difficult to do. 18 of the world's best riders were now left to battle it out in the second round of the Chantilly Global Champions Tour Grand Prix. They had a new course to tackle, with a tough triple and light poles, wide oxes and high verticals. It's certainly going to have to be a challenge to shake up to uh, that group of peers that we've got at the moment. It wasn't young rider Birch Mallon's day. Belgium rider Olivier Philippart put in a good fast clear round. <laughs> followed by David Will and Mick yes. Magdutilla. You are here and make some Casalask. <laughs> that is the first of what I think will be quite a few. Australia's Edwina Tots Alexander secured her place in the jump off. Daniel Deusser rode another good round. Jessica Springsteen narrowly missed out on a place in the jump off after Sinar VA knocked her second to last. Oh, it's a pity. It's enough. Yeah. It's enough. 7283. It gives us the uh, fifth of the clears. Look at Verbaum and Chiara. But a clear round wasn't on the cards for Hans Dieter Dreyer. Daniel Blumen went through to the jump off. Looks himself in with a chance once again. Belgium's Jos Valois didn't quite do enough. He's going to be very oh, not oh, over Josh, on time. He's not going to make it. No. Oh. Birch Mallet watches on. Luciana Denise rode a strong round into the jump off on her 12 year old, fit for fun. And last to go was Julian Epia. Oh no, he's got one out. Last no. And at the end of the second round, Sweden's Rolf Joran Bengston was top of the scoreboard, followed by Leopold van Aston and Australia's Edwina Tops Alexander. Eight riders lined up to take a shot at the title. He's got to go flat out, hasn't he? Really? He doesn't want to finish fourth. Ooh, oh, he tried to just really cut it, didn't he? Now, straight down here to this double, and then straight onto the oxer. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think they can tamper with that. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be the all important turn back here. Two strides, the regulation, two strides from it, and a change of leg and a gallop to the last. Big oxer. Yeah. Plenty of room to get at it. Early on to go, Leopold van Aston. They're not going to be hanging about. Nobody wants to finish sixth or seventh here this afternoon. Yeah, the speed is going to take them out, isn't it? Well, again, it's going to play into the hands of those going towards the end. I mean, if these guys go in early, have poles down, you start playing the percentages then, don't you? Exactly, yeah. But really, nobody goes to places in a no. global champions Grand Prix, do they? Well, you've not gone this far, so give it, give it away. No, no, they all want to go there on a winner. The second place. Certainly a fast combination. Edwina Tops Alexander, Calentina de Jota. Brilliant shot to the last of Edwina's. A stride to die for, to win at Antwerp. And this is not hanging about. Yeah. This is, you could gallop with this pair though. She's so clean of her job. Now, what's she going to do here? Take a time check up. She lands over this parallel. Back here, she can trust her to jump this big vertical. Now gallop. First clear coming up. Great stride at the last. Yeah. Is it enough? Daniel Doyster then first class. Disregarded, we He's got to try and beat the other guys coming after him. Not what's already gone. 
place where this man's so good. She's quick. On the angle. Cutting straight across the corner. That's a brave shot, that is. He didn't do that by accident. He's thought about that to take the inside line. And to keep coming to that one, if you please. This is faster. Three strides, not two. He's got to go. 39.77. Very close indeed. And I think he's just quick enough. 38.98, yeah. New leader. Yeah. Luca Birbaum, Natalie Winter-Schultz's Chiara. He knows he's got to do it with speed alone. Look, he can't turn any faster. It'll be interested to see which line he takes to this double here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, outside line. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more stride there. A bit slower. Yeah. He's got Ooh. a really flight. Oh, what a turn. What a turn. Now he's got to fly to the last. There's the time to be. Come on, Ludger. Go. Close. Yes, yes. Got him. Oh, 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 oh. Daniel Blumen. Oh, Harry. Got away with it. Sideline. No. Gone for the middle. Five or six. Six. Now he's got a turn. Yeah. There's the time to beat. This is he's going to try lot, it. Not a lot in it. Now he's got to no, run. No, no, he's not going to get there. It's a good try. Yeah. Oh, French hopes. Robert Brewer. Won a Grand Prix in Spain in the early part of the year. Oh, no. Uh, right. Luciano. This combination. This, comp this pair, though, together, first launching Global Champions Tour Grand Prix together, I mean, have acquitted themselves well, haven't They've they? They've covered themselves with glory, haven't they? Oh, no. You know, OK, it's, it's come unstitched yeah. in the final moments. Um, but those first two rounds, you know, good. He's been forced into it, hasn't yeah. he? Really, his first two rounds were super. I mean, the pace that Lund has got there. Luciana's going to have to find some issue. Yeah. Capabilities of the horse. <laughs> well, the winner, the winner's name will begin with an L. <laughs> Luciana or Luca. What's she going to do after this turn very quick? Trustworthy at verticals. Gallops to that look. Taking the straight line. Five or six. Yeah. Turn back pretty quick. There's nothing in it. She's wide there. They're going to say wider. Wide there. There's the time to beat. He wouldn't want to call it. I think she's nearly got him, you know. Gallops and has it. Has it now. 38 9 2. 38 9 2. And this is 38 28 from Lindbergh Bermabit. Two, two out of the last three. Yeah. Two separate horses. Wood in old seconds, but a valiant effort, Edward de Rothschild there, watching Lincoln Birbaum straight in for his lap of honour. And deservedly so, that was a full service. So, yeah, brilliant. So, legend of the sport, Ludger Birbaum, stole his second Grand Prix win of the 2016 Tour. Daniel Deusser came a close second, and Colombia's Daniel Blumen took third. I'm really, really pleased because I, from the seven uh, legs I only did four so far, so far so good and uh, in the very end, uh, once we're getting to Doha, it's only the seven best counting, so I still have a bit of hope. I'm feeling great uh, to finish second in the Global Champions Tour Grand Prix of Chantilly here. It's uh, for me a super result uh, and a great end of the day today. 
Germany's Christian Almond still led the way on 186 points in the overall rankings. Luca Bierbaum shot up to second, and Rolf Johan Bengston moved up to third, just one point behind. Still in the lead, good position. My colleagues coming closer, so uh, it's time to get the reins a bit shorter again. And with Shanti wrapped up for another year, thoughts turn to the next part of the tour. The GCT returns to France for leg eight of the competition. It's the star-lit city of Cannes to next play host to the very best horses and riders in the world.